Dear Lila, You were born on a day where a beautiful sunset was bestowed upon Cairo. I took this new highway to come see you from the east end of the city to its western end. And all along the way, there were these lines of palm trees carved into an orange sky, prepping for the breaking of the day. The brand new road is wide and flows smoothly. Driving under such a majestic sunset and along the rich and tall palm trees was a filling experience, one that's hard to have while navigating Cairo's outdoor cruel normalcy. It is as though Cairo was more than its present material reality, but also a meeting of nature and time. But there's another cruelty to navigate. The road, a new construction in the complex road network built by the government recently, is called Tahya Mosque. The slogan is reminiscent of an augmented version of authoritarianism, where much is sanctioned under the guise of a vague notion of the nation. In fact, as I kept driving on with this dreamful landscape, I was interrupted by a platform on the side of the road, one that's designed to host the spectacle of the state. The structure on which the road sits is everything we should be critical of, but the road is wide and flows smoothly. You'd even feel you're flying over the Nile it cuts through and forget where you're coming from and where you're going to. Just a week before you were born, we lost Lauren Berlant, the cultural theorist and the author of Cruel Optimism. From them, we learned how to navigate our emotional cartographies as they are animated by neoliberalism. How that which we genuinely desire sits on that which makes us essentially sad. I'm grateful for the lives that always make us question our thick realities, built around us and through us as finished matter. When your father dropped you in my arms, despite my hesitation at carrying a newborn your size, I felt like the offspring of this fantastic labor of procreation was thrown right on my lap. I was mesmerized, unexpectedly moved. And there, you were sleeping nonchalantly in my arms, perhaps knowing that your journey is just starting, that there is no rush, that you will do this one step at a time, each time drawing from your soul, its ancestors, and that which surrounds you, to walk the next step. A few days before, I had coined for myself a random term for feeling sad all throughout a family vacation. I called it birth-related grief, and I liked the vagueness and the authenticity of this qualifier of grief. There's violence in being birthed out into the world, and perhaps a trace of that stays inside us and becomes somewhat a lens through which we sail through. My friend Sarah Rifi brings to my attention the difference between birth and natality by engaging the politics enshrined in the latter. In natality, as per Hannah Arendt, we are more than just birthed into this world. We are brought into action, into living with others, into being political. As such, natality becomes a radical act of agency. As you make it to wakefulness, I hope you start summoning your companions for your journey. There'll be people you befriend, you love, you build with, you fight with and heal with, you learn from and you teach. There'll be people of all times, some here and some gone. There'll be living matter that speak a different language of life. There'll be spaces you move in, solid and fluid, seas and cities, deserts that you flow in and flow through you. Some will be regular homes and some will be refuges to which you go to find language, to describe that what you're going through. I read somewhere that language hides in the desert. There'll be exceptional sunrises and sunsets that do more than just the marking of your days. They'll manifest the idea of time outside of time, of timeless time. At the risk of sounding naive and unbelievable, in a way, the whole world is yours, the moment you summon it for your journey. All you need is to pay attention to all these details surrounding, 
especially the seamless ones that seem to be a sheer repetition, the ones we are conditioned to no longer see. I was once told that survival lies in paying attention to details. All you need is to take nothing for granted. Not as a warning against the woes of instability, but as an invitation to break open the roads of curiosity and learning, and to constantly begin your steps there by a certain trust that something new shall unveil. You might be unsettled by the uncertainty, but maybe you'll learn that uncertainty is a compass to knowledge. And while doing so, while paying attention and doubting, you'll acknowledge what you feel and make it part of the fragments and narratives you build around to live your life in a certain way. And when the feeling is too much, you may go back to sleep and perhaps let the dream world lead from there on.